Republicans always understood that the premises of military emancipation were based on the understanding that the slaves would run to Union lines when the Union army came into the southern states. That the way they formulated their emancipation policies presupposed that slaves would run to Union lines and that the policy wouldn't work if the slaves liked being slaves, didn't run to Union lines, you know, uh, 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 and the like. And that's there in the very first policy that's formulated, uh, beginning with the contraband policy uh, in late May, a month after the war begins, when the Secretary of War tells General Benjamin Butler at, uh, at Fortress Monroe that he can refuse to return any contrabands who come voluntarily into your lines, but that he himself and his Union soldiers are not to go on to plantations and entice slaves off. That anti-enticement policy gets transferred into the instructions for implementing the emancipation policy uh, of the first Confiscation Act, the August 8th War Department instructions, make exactly the same distinction. You know, slaves coming voluntarily into your lines are not just contraband, they are emancipated. But you cannot go on to a plantation and entice slaves off. That meant that emancipation could only happen with the agency of slaves. The policy itself presupposed that the slaves would be agents in the process. And that's why I think saying, did Lincoln free the slaves, or did the slaves free themselves, is misunderstands the understanding that both the slaves and the Republican policymakers and the Union Army had all along about how this process was going to go on.